Hi guys and welcome to this week's video. In this video we're going to be blocking those annoying adverts network wide using the Pi-hole Docker container. Now let's get started. So, before we start, what is Pi-hole? Well, as the title of the video says, it blocks adverts on the web for your whole network. But why is it actually called Pi-hole? Well, it's not your mouth where you shove your pies and other food down. It's because it was originally used on the single board computer, the Raspberry Pi. And it's a black hole where all the adverts can go into. Hence the name Pi-hole. Right, so that's how it got its name. But the really great thing about Pi-hole is that it runs on your whole network and you don't have to have any client software. All you have to do is use Pi-hole's IP address as your DNS server. And so what this means is any device that connects to our network, whether it be a laptop, a cell phone, a tablet, the ads will be blocked no matter what the device is. So you may be thinking, hey, I use an ad blocker in my browser and I don't need network wide blocking. Well, even if you don't need network-wide blocking, Pi-hole is better than an ad-blocking browser extension. And towards the end of this video, I'll run some comparisons, and then you can see if you agree with me or not. Right, so let's just jump straight in and set this up on the Unraid server. As normal, we're going to go across to the Apps tab and do a search for Pi-hole. So let's click on the button to install. OK, so now we need to set up the template. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use one of the new features in Unraid 6.4 and onwards, which is being able to assign an IP address to an individual Docker container. So at the moment you can see it's set for network type bridge. So we're going to change that and I'm going to use that custom BR0. Now I've got two different ones here because I've got two different networks on my server. So you'll probably only have the one. So just click on to custom and then in here we can give the container an IP address and I'm going to give mine 10.10.20.2 and this IP address is used for us to both log into the web UI of Pi-hole and also as the DNS server on our network and when you're choosing the fixed IP address we can see the subnet on the right here mine's 10.10.20.0 forward slash 24 and when we see the network written in this way when at the end it's got a zero then forward slash 24 it basically means we can choose any free IP address in the range of the one right the way through to 254 and because my internet router was on 10.10.20.1 I thought it good just to make the IP address for the Pi-hole Docker container to be 10.10.20.2 okay so with the IP address now set let's scroll down the template and make some other adjustments as well. So the next thing that we're going to change is here where it says container variable server IP. So we want that to match what we've just put as the fixed IP address above. So for me it's 10.10.20.2. And then underneath here we've got the various DNS servers that we can have Pi-hole use. By default they're set to the Google DNS servers and I'm going to leave mine as that. And further down we can change our time zone here. I'm in the UK so that's absolutely fine for me. And here we can change the password to log into the web UI of Pi-hole. And by default it's set for admin and I'm going to leave it as that. And the rest we can just leave just as is. So let's scroll down and click apply and that will pull down the container. Okay so that's done so now let's click on the done button and then go on to the Docker tab. And now we can see that Pi-hole's running. So I'm going to click onto Pi-hole and then go to Web UI. And that brings us to the Pi-hole dashboard. And on the dashboard we can see things such as the total queries that have gone through Pi-hole and how many clients, how many of those queries have been blocked or the percentage of which have been blocked. And here we can see the domains that are on our block list. And this block list, it's important as it's how Pi-hole knows and updates which domains to block so we don't see any ads. And we can actually add additional lists to this block list, and that's what we're gonna do next. But first, we're gonna have to log in to get to the Pi-hole settings. So to do that, click on here where it says login, and then pop in the password. 
and the password is whatever you put in the template and I left mine as admin. And now if we go down here to settings and we click onto block lists, these are the block lists that come as standard with Pi-hole, but we can add a new block list by putting in a URL here. And there's a great list that I found posted on Reddit by Wally3k. And this list, the big block collection, I put a link to it in the description and you can see it here. And you can see this is a really comprehensive list with a lot of things that we can add. So to add an extra block list, we just copy the URL and then go back across to Pi-hole and just paste it in here. And then click on save and update and Pi-hole will now update the blacklist. So with that done, let's go back across the dashboard. And if we look here, the domains on the block list, because we've put that extra list in, have now gone up to 122,980. So the more items we add to the block list, the bigger pie holes black hole gets, and the more ads get sucked up. So on the computer I'm making this video on, I've already changed the DNS to be pointing to pie hole, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. But quickly now, I'm just going to do a little bit of web browsing, and then we'll come back to the dashboard and see what's changed on here. And so now you can see we've got a few more statistics on the dashboard. And we can see here the total queries from one client, and that's the computer I'm on now. There's been 145, of which 27 have been blocked, or as a percentage of total, 18.6. So that's how the blacklist works, and the whitelist, well, that's the complete opposite. Here we can put in any domain which we want to be excluded from being filtered by Pi-hole. So you just put it into this box and then click Add. Okay, so now we've talked about our whitelist and blacklists, let's have a look at how we can configure our network to use Pi-hole. So as I said earlier, all we have to do is just change the DNS so it's pointing to Pi-hole. And the easiest way to do that is by adjusting the DNS in the DHCP server. Now for most people, their DHCP server will be in their internet router. So when any device connects onto your network, it will get a network address from your DHCP server. And this will include which DNS to use. Now routers from different manufacturers are going to be slightly different. The DHCP settings are normally found under the advanced tab and under the LAN settings. So let's have a look at this router, an Asus AC68U. We can see that the DHCP server is enabled and it will be by default, so just leave it like that. But I'll just mention now, there is a scenario whereby we may need to disable the DHCP server and actually have Pi-hole run DHCP duties, but more on that in a moment. Right, so just looking at the starting and ending pool addresses here, that's a block of IP addresses that will be given to clients when they connect to the network, and you can leave this set as it is. The default gateway will be the IP address of your router, and again, leave this as it is. It's here, the DNS server, this is what we need to change. The way this router is currently configured is to use the Google DNS, which is 8.8.8.8. .8 so, what we're going to do is we're going to change this to the IP address of the Pi-hole Docker container, and then our router will give out that as the DNS server for all the clients. So they'll now start filtering out adverts. But some routers can be problematic and they may not allow you to change the DNS in the DHCP server settings. And this is one such router here. It's called a BT Smart Hub, and they're quite common over here in the UK. So if I go across to the DHCP server settings on this router, you can see here the settings are very limited. Yeah, we can change the IP address range for the pool for the clients, but little else. I couldn't see anywhere in the DHCP settings where I could choose my own DNS. So, this is where we'd need to disable the DHCP server settings on the router. Then having done this, we need to go back over to the Pi-hole web UI and then go to the settings. And then from here, we click on the top where it says DHCP. And then we want to just select this checkbox here so the DHCP server is enabled. So now Pi-hole will be running as the DHCP server on the network. Now it's important to only have one DHCP server on your network, so you must make sure, if you're using this setting, that you've disabled it in your router. Just check that the IP address range pool is OK for your network. If not, you can just change it here. And also, just check that your router gateway IP address is also correct. So once that's done, just scroll down and click on to save. And now the Pi-hole container will be the DHCP server giving out the IP addresses on your network. 
If you'd rather not touch your router settings at all, then you can just add the DNS server in the settings on your actual computer to be pointing to the Pi-hole container. Okay, so now having changed the DNS for the Ezeal router or manually, you'll now be blocking ads. So let's take a look at it in action. So first we'll have a look at a website without using Pi-hole. And as you can see, there's two adverts showing. So now let's look at the same website, but this time using Pi-hole to filter the adverts. And now we can see that those two ads are no longer showing. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that I considered Pi-hole better at blocking adverts than some browser extension that does the same. And this is why. By using an ad block that's a browser extension, it can easily be detected by the website. Then sometimes they'll block you. But using Pi-hole, because it's not running in the browser, it doesn't get detected. Right, so just one last thing to look at. What happens if we want to change the actual DNS servers that Pi-hole uses? If we click onto settings here, and then go to DNS, normally this is how we'd change them. Now, a lot of people might not want to use the Google DNS servers, and maybe want to use, say, Quad9. But we don't want to actually change anything here. For our Sun Raiders, we want to make any changes to the DNS in the Docker template itself. So if we scroll down to the bottom of the template, you can see here this is where the DNS is set. So if I wanted to change to Quad9, which I think is an excellent DNS provider, I just put in the primary DNS here, and Quad9 secondary DNS underneath just here, and then click Apply. So now let's go back across to Pi-hole and log back in. And if you look at our DNS, it's now set for Quad9. And the reason we don't change the DNS here is because once we update the container, these DNS servers will always go back to what are set in the template. Okay, so that's what we do if we want to change our upstream DNS servers. Right, okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. Now, I hope I haven't actually left anything out important about Pi-hole. I don't think I have, but if I have, then please share it down in the comments below. Anyway, guys, it's time for me to go now, and I really hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then please help me and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you really like what I'm doing and you'd like to help support the channel, then any donations are really appreciated, which you can do through the PayPal or Patreon links in the description of this video or the channel homepage. Anyway guys, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you all next time.